The electric cars that are on the market already and coming later this year are absolutely amazing, especially the tech. Obviously, Tesla is leading the way, but there are other brands like Audi, Mercedes, you know, Lucid later this year that are definitely give them a run for their money with their own technology and take on what the technology in electric cars should be. But as we know that most people complain that, you know, the reason they don't want to buy an electric car is because they can't afford an electric car obviously right now especially the really good ones are beyond most of the people's budgets so people are looking and wondering when can they have an affordable electric car most people agree that the affordable electric car uh, should be around twenty thousand dollars but let me know in the comment section if that's also your take how much do you think an affordable electric car should cost so i figured i'm going to ask one of the very few people that i know uh, who will probably give me the best answer to this. Uh, not only he worked for a legacy manufacturer for a long time, in this case, BMW, he also founded and was a CEO of a couple of electric car startups. Of course, I'm talking about our monthly contributor, Karsten Breinfeld. He's a CEO of Fair Day Future currently, former CEO of Byton, and of course, he worked for BMW for a long time. He brought us the BMW i8, which is still on the market. Still one of the most beautiful cars, I think, also. Let me know if you agree. Of course, uh, we have a few other monthly contributors uh, this year that include Sandy Monroe, Rich Rebill. So if there was ever time to subscribe to this channel, it would be now. So click on the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so before I bring Karsten in, of course, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla, Model S, Model X, Model 3, and Cybertruck in the future, maybe even a semi-truck, but go to evanex.com, Check it out. I, when I had my Teslas, I had nothing but Evanex accessories. All of my friends who have Teslas right now have Evanex accessories. So check them out at Evanex.com. Now, I should mention that right now you can technically get a brand new electric car for $20,000 because if you get a Nissan Leaf in some areas, especially in the United States, with the tax credit and uh, some of the uh, incentives from the state, and you get the absolutely stripped down version, you will get it to about 20,000. Of course, in Europe, uh, a very similar pricing is for we know Zoe. Unfortunately, we don't have it here in the United States, uh, but incentives are going away. And so we're talking, we're gonna be talking about only $20,000 price tax just boom right there without any incentives. Um, and you know, Carson had a lot of interesting things to say um, because I was wondering like, well, what do these cars need to have? I mean, they're going to be cheap cars, but what kind of technology do they need to have? Is it a digital technology? Is it, is it hardware? Uh, and also the biggest question is when? When can we have them? The answer will probably surprise you just like it surprised me. So without further ado, here we go. My interview and my conversation with Karsten Breidenfeldt a few weeks ago. All right, we're uh, back here with uh, your monthly segment. I'm excited. So far, everyone's been loving it. And I think the topics that we discuss are pretty important. And I feel like you're one of the few people who even can speak on some of them. <laughs> All right, let us let me throw one of those topics at you. So there's a lot of conversation about what's an affordable electric car. You know, Tesla has sort of came up with a $35,000 affordable mass production Model 3. But honestly, my audience, you know, they watch it all over. They, they're not just in Silicon Valley. They're saying $35,000 is still a lot of money. Um, <laughs> and when you ask them, what's the price point? They're saying, you know, listen, it got to be around 20000 Okay, um, let me throw it. I mean, you've been around for a while, legacy manufacturers, startups and everything. When can we get to a $20,000 electric car? And do you think it's going to be a startup or, or, or a bigger legacy manufacturer that's going to actually end up with, with the first one? It's very two interesting questions, to be honest, because if you look out to the market, how many, um, how many great cars would you find even with combustion engine and $20,000 today? Maybe, maybe not too many. But uh, I, I definitely agree to, to, to make this become a volume product. We, we have to come to this point. Now, um, I, can, I can tell you wh wh why we cannot do it today, and then we can talk about potential ways to it. As long as we are talking about cars with 300, kilo, 300 miles of range, with five seats, and very spacey and big and luxurious, this will not happen. And as you know, the, the, the biggest cost driver right now is still the battery, and it will be uh, over time. If we would change our, 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 our perspective and add a lot, bit of technology we need, basically saying, hey, forget the 300 miles range. Maybe um, 80 miles or 100 miles maximum range 
for daily commuting is okay, given that we have high speed charge, that we have a charging infrastructure around, that we have high speed charging, which in 10 to 15 minutes will, will, will complete your, your battery. So if we would accept this, and if we go, would go back to smaller cars maybe, right, which, which are not built for, for, for five people or even for seven people, maybe just for one or two passengers because they are purpose built for shared mobility approaches, um, then uh, there's clearly a way to, to, to make this happen. And, and coming back to your second question, who, who will achieve this? If so, it will definitely be one of the startup companies because what you have to do is you have to throw legacy away. You have to think along different lines. You have to change concepts completely. And this is something where traditional car makers do very, very hard. Well, I mean, there's also something to be said that, you know, the startups are, are, are more thirsty for profits. Obviously, you've got to replenish the bank account where, where the legacy manufacturer might say, you know, we will sell, you know, at loss, but it's going to be an entry model into, into the brand. Do you think that might actually happen or they, they're just not going to touch that at all? I think it will be very hard for them to touch it because um, even if we could achieve such a model, the profitability by selling those cars will be very, very, very low. And it will come, will end up in, 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 in a mass manufacturing scenario where you have to sell a lot of those cars with very, very small margin um, and a lot of risk because you have to invest billions and billions in manufacturing those cars um, to have a very small profitability. So I don't think that this really will happen. This can only happen if you combine it with the, this new business models for connected cars, which is shared mobility, selling mobility based on those cars, not, not individually owned, and still converting them in a smart device on wheels and making money out of digital services, and digital products and services we are selling. Okay, so it's interesting you mentioned this, you know, as lo if it's a smaller battery, so we're keeping the cost down, but the infrastructure is there and it's really hard, and it's really fast to, to, to charge it there, I can see it. But what about the model of where, you know, right now when you buy a gas car, you don't buy a big tank of gas with it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but electric cars come with batteries. <laughs> Do you see a model where a car would be sold for $20,000, but the battery would be sold extra, as, as an extra item or something that can be leased, for example? So, you know, you might be only need, you know, an, a, a, an 80 mile range battery at first, but then you change your jobs, you get kids, all of a sudden you need, and then you, you don't have to change the car, you just lease a different uh, a, a battery, a bigger battery. But at the end of the day, the cost of the car does not include batteries, just like with flashlights, right? We used to buy the flashlights that batteries not included. What do, you, do you think there's a possibility of, of the whole industry going that direction? This is definitely a possibility and things which are, let's say, under discussion already are. Um, if you look to Faraday's technology, you will find this very interesting. Our battery um, uh, is built from so-called strings, and all those strings are in parallel, so you can add them and remove them. There's a minimum of three, a maximum of six. You can scale the battery technology by adding and removing strings. This you can think about even as a, a service solution later to add more capacity because the housing is always the same, or to remove some. Now, the whole business model of leasing uh, batteries or, or, or even updating or upgrading batteries over time will only work if we find a second life cycle for the used batteries. There, there might be a good chance because if it, even if you use it for four years, five years, even eight or ten years, um, the, the, the battery is still working. It will just, maybe the capacity will go down a bit and technology will be old. But for stationary use, you will still be able to do it. So you could think about second life cycle of batteries where you bundle them into stationary packs you can put in your in your, in your, in your backyard and put a solar changer on, charger on it and then you create your own, own, own energy and if this kind of second life cycle would come to, to, to life then uh, there is a big future for this kind of model. So if we set that idea aside and we just go for the standard way of selling electric cars right now where a battery is included when do you think the $20,000 car is going to be possible um, three years five years well, what are your thoughts? Uh, it is a bit difficult to, uh, to say because um, uh, it will take the, the decision of a company to do it and once the decision is taken then it still will take three years uh, to, to make the whole thing happen. But uh, as I see the whole thing taking off right now, I expect that we will find something like this between five and eight years from now. And uh, uh, obviously it will have to be a, a compact car for the, for the shorter range and lighter. And, um, any feature that you think that will be absolutely must have, even in a 20,000 entry level uh, electric car, 
let's say in three or five years when it's uh, available? Do you think it's going to be digital product? Do you think it's going to be te some, some technology that, that's just going to catch up and, and going to be relatively cheap? What is that one must-have feature do you think that, that all people will demand? It will definitely be the, 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 the digital part. I can tell you a funny story. A, co a colleague of mine is very proud of his daughter. The daughter um, has 16 years now, and in the U.S. you can get your driver's license. So she got her driver's license, and he was asking her, what kind of car do you want? And I was thinking about specification and horsepower. She said, white and Apple CarPlay has to work. Wow. <laughs> white yeah. and Apple CarPlay. Yeah. And this is how it's going to be. So um, the, to, to, to come up with $20,000, you have to reduce the cost dramatically on chassis, on wheels, on structure, and all. It doesn't matter at all. Small powertrain, low power, small battery, just to make it work. But the digital experience, this has to be great. Yeah. You know, when I asked my dad for, for a car, he said, there's a job right there down the street. You can get any car you want, car play, whatever you want. No problem, son. Time, time, yeah, time. yeah. All right, well, listen, obviously, we'll probably have this conversation at some point where we're going to be getting close. Um, I, I, I think the answer could also be, you know, if you want a $20,000 electric car, you can get a used <laughs> that's the middle three at some point, right? Okay, so, all right, well, listen, get, uh, great to talking to you again. Uh, once, you know, and I'll, uh, I'll see you next month. Thank you. Boy, was I surprised by his answer. I really thought that five years is kind of lengthy. I really was hoping that this is something that we would be able to have within the next two or three years. You know, I know Tesla is working on a more affordable car. I mean, Mini is coming out uh, with, with one that after this, again, we kind of have to uh, calculate the incentives. But and I agree with him that digital products is probably going to be something that everyone's going to need them, especially most likely a lot of young people are going to be buying these cars as their first or second cars. But I was also surprised that he thought it would be the startups like Fair the Future, maybe, um, that will be bringing these cars uh, to market. I really thought it would be the legacy manufacturers that can afford to make them in such large numbers where they can drive the cost down and maybe even take a, a bit of a hit on them just to get the people into their brand or back to their brand and grow them into uh, more expensive models. But this is why Karsten is here every month uh, because he knows way better, but of course we'll be able to tell in another three to five years, right? Uh, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. And of course, if you want to follow me all around uh, the world, really, but definitely the country uh, to all different kinds of events and see what's going on behind the scenes. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram under e for electric As a matter of fact, you can find me under e for electric on all social media, including TikTok. If you don't know what it is, ask your teenage kids. <laughs> they will definitely know. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, but the, the, the subscribe button is right there. And then don't forget to click on the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, looking forward to your comments. Other than that, I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.